الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and respected sisters in Islam we are in the sacred month of Al-Muharram and in light of this month and in specific the day of Ashura which was yesterday, the 10th of Al-Muharram. For those who took advantage of the day and they fasted it, we ask Allah to accept it and to make it a source of expiation of our sins. Amen. And in this consideration, regarding the day of Ashura, why are we are advised to remember that day and to fast it and to hold it in significance because there is something very important behind it. There's something behind it. Because the history of that day is very much related to Nabiullah Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. A prophet which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of in the Quran by name more than any other prophet. And indeed there is wisdom behind the ayat of the Quran. And there is wisdom behind the events and the occurrences that Musa alayhi salam was part of. And in specific what happened on the 10th of Muharram during his time. One of the main chapters of the life of Musa alayhi salam is his clash with a tyrant, with the oppressor, Fir'aun, the Pharaoh. A clash between oppression and freedom. A clash between Iman and Kufr, faith and disbelief. Before Musa was even born alayhi salam, Fir'aun, he had a dream in which he saw a fire coming from Al-Quds, coming from Jerusalem, destroying all the properties of the Egyptians, meaning the, the disbelievers at that time. While this fire was destroying the property of the Egyptians, it was sparing and leaving the houses and the properties of Bani Israel, which were the Muslims of that time. This dream prompted Fir'aun to go to his magicians and to seek an, an interpretation immediately, as he was worried. And they told him that a child will be born from Bani Israel and he will take your kingdom. Fir'aun, upon hearing that, he introduced a policy which said, or which ordered, for every newborn baby, baby boy, that he should be killed from Bani Israel and, should, and he should not be spared to live. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addressed this point when he addressed Bani Israel. And he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوَى الْعَذَابِ يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبَنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ Allah says, and remember when we saved your forefathers from the people of Pharaoh who afflicted you with the worst torment, slaughtering your newborn sons and keeping your females alive. And in that was a great trial from your Lord. So that, that is what Fir'aun, this is what he did. And Allah decreed that the mother of Musa, that she is impregnated that year, but she concealed that pregnancy until Musa was born. And when he was born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, 
ووحينا إلى أم موسى أن أرضعيه فإذا خفت عليه فالقيه في اليم ولا تخاف ولا تحزني إن رادوه إليك وجعلوه من المرسلين Allah says that we inspired the mother of Musa to, to nurse him, to suckle him but when you fear for him cast him into the river and do not fear and do not grieve don't be sad indeed we will return him to you and we will make him one of the messengers so she threw him in the river the Nile river which is no ordinary river it's from the longest and largest rivers in the world despite this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he granted Ummi Musa the mother Musa he granted her reassurance that she shouldn't be afraid nor sad for Allah will return him to back back to her and he will make him from the mursaleen from the messengers this is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the promise of Allah will come to pass that the promise of Allah is true وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلَ and who is more truer in word than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah says وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَ فَارِغَ إِنْ كَادَ لَتُبْدِ بِهِ لَوْ لَا أَرْغَبَطَنَ عَلَى قَلْبِهَا لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ and the heart of Musa's mother became empty after she, she threw the basket into the river she couldn't think of anything else besides him السلام, and then due to the intensity of her sadness she was about to disclose her situation to the people because she was so afraid but Allah says had we not strengthened her heart with faith with patience so that she might remain one of the believers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted her tranquility and steadfastness Afterward, she told Musa's sister to follow this basket. The basket which ended up by the very place that she feared the most and she was concerned about, right in front of the palace of Fir'aun. So Allah says, فَالْتَقَطَهُ آلُ فِرْعَوْنَ لِيَكُونَ لَهُمْ عَدُوًا وَحَزَنًا إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا كَانُوا خَاطِئِينَ And then Allah says, then the family of the Pharaoh picked him up they picked him up of the river so that he would become to them an enemy and a cause of grief for soon Fir'aun he was to meet his fate نَفَعَنِي اللَّهُ وَيَّاكُمْ بِالْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ وَنَفَعَنِي وَيَّاكُمْ بِمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ وَذِكْرِ الْحَكِيمِ أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ As Musa alayhi salam, he was picked up by the household of Fir'aun and he was adopted by them by the wish of the Pharaoh's wife, Asya, radiallahu anha wa alayhi salam, because she did not have any children. And many events unfolded as Musa grew under the shade of the palace of Fir'aun where a lot of corruption and oppression and disbelief was taking place. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He protected Musa and He guided Musa alayhi salam. And fast forward, because Musa has a lot of stories, it's a long history, but fast forward to the point where he had to flee for his life and then before coming back again, but this time as a messenger of Allah. For Allah commissioned him with the task of conveying the message to Fir'aun and to warn Fir'aun. And many incidents took place and many lessons with Bani Israel the children of Israel, which led up to the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, which coincides with yesterday's date a few thousand years ago. When Musa السلام, and Bani Israel had to leave Egypt, Fir'aun followed them. Allah says, فَأَسْرِ بِعِبَادِ لَيْلًا إِنَّكُمْ مُتَّبَعُونَ Allah orders Musa that they should leave, they should depart at night. For surely Fir'aun is going to follow them. So go in the night. When Fir'aun realized this, that Musa had left with the followers of Ben Israel, after the sunrise of that day, him and his army began to chase after Musa and the believers who were ahead of Fir'aun. But eventually Fir'aun, he caught up and reached uh, to them. When Musa reached the sea, the Red Sea, 
Then the Ben Israel, they noticed Fir'aun and his troops, they had approached and they're close. So they said, فَلَمَّا تَرَى الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ When each group saw one another, their one, when they were in each other's sight, the companions of Musa said, Indeed, we are to be overtaken. We're done. We're going to be finished now. Because Firaun and his people, they caught up to them at the shore of the Red Sea. And Musa's reply was amazing. Musa's reply is what every believer should say. It's what every believer should have yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is the one who will save you from any type of distress. He says, Qala kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. He said, no. Indeed, with me is my Lord. He will guide me. فَأُوحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنَضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرِ فَانْفَلَقَ فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ كَطَوْدِ الْعَظِيمِ Then Allah says, then we inspired Musa alayhi salam saying, strike the sea with your stick. Strike the sea with your staff. And then it parted. And each separate part of that sea water became like a huge firm mass of a mountain. وَأَزْلَفْنَا ثَمَّ الْآخَرِينَ Then Allah says, then we brought Fir'aun closer and his troops near to the sea. وَأَنْجَيْنَا مُوسَىٰ وَمَنْ مَعَهُ أَجْمَعِينَ And we saved Musa and everyone who was with him. ثُمَّ أَغْرَقْنَا الْآخَرِينَ And then we drown the rest of the disbelievers. You all know, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that a stick cannot split the sea. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who caused the sea to split. But the ulama say that there is a great lesson in this. Musa was asked to do his part. Musa was asked to do his part with a stick. So he was doing his part. He was doing what Allah told him to do. He was fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah took care of the rest. Allah took care of the matter. We can't expect to just sit down and do nothing but hope that things will get better. Hope that things will change. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to put the effort. We need to fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to, to sweat a little bit. We need to wake up for Fajr prayer. We need to exercise patience and difficulty and to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to exercise patience in times of strife and difficulties. And have yaqeen in Allah azza wa jal that the victory is for the believers. وَالْآقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That the affair at the end will be for the believers. Ikhwani wa khawati billah There's many lessons to be learned from the life of Musa alayhi salam. And from the lessons that we touched upon today, scratching the surface as we say, about the life of Musa, and in particular what happened on the 10th of Muharram, on the day of Ashura, is that obedience and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings about positive outcomes. It brings about an outcome which will be pleasant for the believers. And also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He may grant respite, He may grant time, to the tyrant and to the oppressor. But when he takes him, when he seizes him, there's no going back. There's no escaping. For Allah will punish him. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal that he rectifies our affairs. We ask Allah that he rectifies the conditions of the Muslim everywhere that they are. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzukna tiba'a wa arina al-batila batilan warzukna shtinaba. Allahumma ya mukalib al-kulubi wa al-absar. Thabit kulubin ala deenik. اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبا على دينك اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر فبدأ في بنفسه فقال جل من قال عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين هذا والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة